Hello and welcome to the Donna Show. This is your host DJ Donna and in this season we are going to talk to all the godfathers of our DJing industry about their journey, about uh, the contribution towards music and much more. Today we have a renowned name of our industry. He's a polished professional in the industry and he ensures proper mix of music and entertainment as he creates an ambience of taste, talent and celebration. To every event he brings his extensive knowledge of music and energy to make any event worthwhile that guests talk about for years. That's right. That's none other than DJ Jazzy Joe. Well, uh, hello sir, how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. How has lockdown been for you? Uh, lockdown is fine. Uh, I miss going out. I miss going to clubs and going to yeah, yeah. but uh, but otherwise uh, there's a lot to do. I've got a lot of music with me, a lot of records, more than 12,000 records. Okay, so, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. that way, Sorry? That way it's fun. It's a different life, but a good life. Correct, correct, correct. Right. So are we, are we good to go with the question answer rounds? Yeah, sure. Why okay. not? Okay. So the first question for you is, when did you start DJing and who inspired you to be a DJ? Okay. Um, I don't know when I started because... Uh, somebody asked me that uh, when did you train to be a DJ so I said I've been training all my life you know so <laughs> it's very hard it's very hard to say when when you know you started to think like a DJ or you started to go towards DJ it's very difficult to say that unless you have done it at an institute or something you know correct, then you correct. Can correct. But, uh, the first time I got uh, access to equipment was in 1984 Oh wow! Yeah, in 1984, <laughs> uh, that was the first time I went to a club. I went to a discotheque. I met a DJ. We spoke. Uh, I was in school. I was in 11th standard, and oh, wow. uh, he was impressed with me because uh, I used to do a radio show. Uh, this was in Jakarta, Indonesia. Correct. So I used to do a radio show, and he used to listen to it. And uh, mm -hmm. once in between the radio show, he called me up. We used to have a two-hour radio show. So there was a break after 50 minutes. So he called me up during the break and he said, I'm DJ Penny from Pit Stop Discotheque. I said, yeah, I know you. He said, how do you know me? I said, yeah, I know you. I buy your cassettes. You mix nonstop cassettes and, and they're available in the market. I buy them. So he was quite impressed. So he said, I'd like to meet you. Can I meet you? Do I have to come to the station or would you like to come to the discotheque? I oh, said, wow. yeah, no, I'll come to the disco. I was an 11th standard kid, you know? <laughs> correct, correct, correct. 15 years the old. Enthusiasm of, of entering a nightclub and stuff is a complete. Oh, yeah. And he was a top DJ asking me if I want to come to the nightclub. You know, why not? Why not? So I said, yeah, sure, I'll come. And I went and met him. And then um, after that night, he, he told me, he said, why don't you come from the school? Once you come from the school, you have to pass my hotel anyway. So might as well. Yeah, two, three times. Yeah, so yeah. If you can come, because around three o'clock, four o'clock, I listen to the new records. He used to get his records uh, from UK, from Singapore. Wow. He said, he said I listened to the new records around four o'clock. So uh, you also come during why that Why not day. come and join in, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so why don't you come in and, you know, you listen to the records and listen to new songs. You correct. already know all the songs. He yeah, was correct, correct. That I knew all the new songs. I knew all the mixes. I knew all the remixes. I knew which one was good. I knew the artist. I knew if any artist had done the cover version of that song. So uh, when I look back now, I think what he thought was that this guy is already, already half a DJ, you know? Correct. So why not make him a full-time DJ? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. He, he doesn't Correct. have access to the equipment, but yeah. otherwise, otherwise he has the knowledge, he knows what to Correct. do, you know? So he called me over and I used to go to the club and listen to the music. Then he started to let me use the turntable, let me use the equipment. And that's where it started from. So I can say uh, formally in 1984. So you started your DJing with turntables and not uh, the Denons or, or yeah. was it a cassette? Uh, was no, it a cassette that you cassettes. started with? I started cassettes. with cassettes. But okay. then when I went to the club, uh, that was when uh, Benny introduced me to the turntables. That was when I started it's, using... You know, it's a little uh, thing that we want to know. I mean, since we've never really played on cassettes, what is the experience like? How would you mix your tracks and, you know... Well, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to mix on cassettes. You see... Uh, Art, art thrives where there are difficulties. 
Correct, correct. You learn, you learn quite a lot from all the difficulties that you face. Exactly, Absolutely. exactly. Absolutely. The artist, a, a true artist, loves difficulties. Correct, you know, correct. Absolutely. You, you give me a difficult crowd. You give me a different genre of music, a difficult genre. You know, and I, I would love the challenge. Correct, and, correct. Absolutely. That's that's how you know. That's how it was with cassettes. It was difficult. It was not easy. You had to go. You had to push the envelope. You had to go beyond what a cassette player would do. Right. You know, right. like all all my cassette players with my father used to buy for me. Um, he he saw I had interest, so he he thought the best thing I can buy for my son is a cassette, cassette player. Correct. Correct. And cassette the second player. day I would open it up. I would open all the screws. <laughs> I would open it up. I would see. Where you the like mom- being a little engineer back back in the days. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I would find out where where the motor is because once oh, wow. I know where the motor is, then I know how to manipulate the motor and use it as a pitch control. Oh wow! You know, so that's that's how we used to think and we used to try and do all the effects that you have in the top big mixers today. All these effects have been developed by old school DJs live. Wow! And, and now they have been turned into electronic effects. Electronic sound, exactly. Yes, yes. Easy in the mixer. Like flange, flange, echo, everything was made manual. Wow, that yeah. must have been an experience. So like, that was the fun of, of doing cassettes, you know, of, of wow. using using a pen to stop it, you know, correct. using the pause button to create an echo. Correct, you know, correct. I wanted correct. to say, Dona, 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 Dona. Then I would <laughs> record Dona five times. And each time, oh, wow. reduce the volume. Right. Each time, would reduce the volume. So it would become an echo. Wow! So everything oh. was done manually, and and that's that's the good part of it. That's that's uh, that's. I think I think I am blessed that I was in that period when we did not have controllers, we did not have uh, the sync button, we did not have all that. So I Correct. think I think that is the reason that I am still happy. I'm still going strong. I'm still into mixing because we came okay. up the hard way. So we know. We know the fun. We know correct, the correct, absolutely. Challenges. Yes. We know the achievements. Right. If you do it easy, there are no achievements. Correct. Very true. I totally agree with you. The crowd, but you can't fool yourself. You know. Right. Right. So that way, I feel blessed that we came up with that. <laughs> so since we know all of this, so now, were you really inclined towards music as a child? As in, any of your family members were a part of the music uh, field uh, as a, as a child? Any? Do you remember anything no, at all? No, Donna. None of. None of my family members were into music professionally. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, anyone they, kind of who was inclined to music or anything in your family, you know, people, you know, like as a uh, generation or as just you, the black sheep in the family, as we all say. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the red sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I was the red sheep. Uh, <laughs> no, but but with my family, you see, uh, I always say that my family, my father came from a village. My mother came right. from a town. We right. were a middle class family. We went around the world because my father was in the foreign services. Correct. But I will always say that my parents were broad minded. They had the guts to let me do whatever I wanted to do in life. That's brilliant. You know, I mean. Which was a very rare thing in the 70s, in no, the 80s. No, it's, it's, it's still the case now as well. I mean, uh, I mean people no, still, no, parents no. still have a little issue with. Their children no, go I, get, I get I get students. Their parents want to sit with me. They want to talk with me. They want to understand the good, the bad, and the ugly. Correct. You know, correct. You know, correct. It's getting better. It's improving. But in Absolutely. the 80s, a parent could not it tell anybody. It was taboo. Yeah, it was a taboo back in the days. Yeah, not taboo. It was not understood. Correct. Taboo, taboo is something you understand. DJing correct. was not understood. Understood. Somebody, I'm a DJ. Correct. They will ask you, okay, you're a DJ. What do you play? <laughs> you play the drums. Do First you, of all, no. I, I think I think the question is still there. Uh, do, are you, you know, when people start DJing, they're like, "Kya DJ bajate ho?" I mean, they think it's an, they think DJing is an is an equipment. Exactly. That is not. We are the disco jockeys, you know. So it's, it's, it's still that people is, still don't know the the whole you know thing about the, DJ. The, the DJ is a disc jockey. Which is the person who is mixing the music for you? The person right. who is making you dance is the DJ. 
Yeah. The dancer is not the DJ. The equipment is not the it's DJ. It's not the DJ, but people still think that way. That you know, I mean. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, tell us about an incident memory related to your career that will always be cherished by you. Anything at all you remember? Anything? Ah, there are there are too many moments. I think I think the best moment for a DJ is when somebody from the crowd at the end of the night tells you that you know you gave them a good time. You know, I think yeah, that's that's the best moment. Yes. Uh, yes. That's, that's the best. Otherwise, I've had so many moments. I've had so many moments. You know, uh, there was this old, uh, there was a Delhi competition, in fact, the Delhi DJ competition. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, this was uh, somewhere in 97, I think. Uh, 97? Right. No, earlier, earlier, 94, I think. So, uh, on the night of the competition, uh -huh. once, on the same night, was the last night of my club where I was the resident DJ. They were closing down for renovation. So it okay. was the last night okay. before it closed for renovation. And that is the night that the competition was there in Taj Palace Hotel. And right. I was in Mohammedan Hotel. I was the resident DJ of CJ's. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, which was a wonderful club. I don't know if you if you know about CJ's. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about it. I've heard about it. So. Okay, okay. So yeah, yeah. it was a great club, a wonderful club. And um, now, how do you participate in a competition when your club is having its final night before going for renovation? You know, so, and I wanted to be part of the competition. I always want to be part of a competition. Correct. Not to win, not to win. I don't care a damn if I lose. If Just I'm the, the last experience person. itself. Just the experience, the experience itself. Experience and the fact that you are, you are part, you are part of everyone, you know? Correct, I'm, correct. I'm kind of the DJ who, like I had a concept called Mix Masters where okay. we were four DJs from around the country, going around the country mm -hmm. and together. So I'm kind of the DJ who likes to play ping pong. I, I like to uh, play aside another DJ or two DJs or four DJs or wow. five DJs. Okay. And if there's a competition, I like to be part of it. Nowadays, right. nowadays they want me to be the judge. I'm, I'm ready <laughs> to do even that. Although my hands are itching, but even that is okay with me. You know, because you get to hear the, the right. new DJ. They play such fantastic mixes and, and, and try so hard and put in so many things. So that that night I had this responsibility and I wanted to be part of the competition. So I asked uh, I asked my owner, uh, Mrs. CJ uh, at Meridian and uh, through the GM, I asked her and she was nice enough to permit me. She said, okay, there'll be a car waiting. You go, you play your set and you come back. Correct. How long will that take? I said about 45 minutes. Because in the night, Taj Palace and... Yeah, it's not, I mean, the traveling is easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I said about 45 minutes. I have a 15 minute set. So she said, okay, done. Can be done. Go and you get your thing done. Take part and we'll do this. So I went and I took part and I went right at the end. I was the last guy uh, because of the timings. And uh, I went there, I played my set and I ran out. And I went to the escalators Taj Palace banquets and the organizer, he comes running behind me. Jazzy, Jazzy, don't go. I said, no boss, my night is going on. My crowd right. is, my assistant is playing for me. I have to go. I did, I did my part. Wonderful. Good event. <laughs> I like the crowd, lots of energy. He said, no, we're counting the votes. You are winning. I said, so it's okay if I'm winning or losing. I don't care. I'm going. He said, no, please. Five minutes, five, ten minutes. You are winning. We need to announce. Right now we'll announce. <laughs> so I said, okay. So then we went. And it came to me that I won. And I was so happy. I was amazed. And yeah, that, was, I mean, so... that was not the good part. That was not the good part. Now, those were days when we did not have mobiles. There were no mobiles around. Yeah, yeah, yes. No yeah. social media, no mobile. It's from a landline. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I won. People clapped, everything. I said, thank you very much. I gave a little speech and I ran because I was thinking about my crowd. And I reached the hotel. And to my surprise, the news that I had won reached before me. Before oh. me, it reached the hotel. Wow, okay. People called from the lobby to the lobby in Meridian and told them that your DJ has won. So when I reached the hotel, all, all the security guard in the lobby, everybody, the lobby uh -huh. manager, everybody, everybody was there waiting to greet me and clapping and all the way down to the club. And the crowd, there was no music going on. Everybody was waiting for me 
Can you just, imagine? Just to give you an applause. And they all clapped and everything. And then there was a request to play the set that I played in the competition. Oh, wow. Yeah. That must so have been I, great. I said, hello, you guys are here to dance in a competition. <laughs> you play a lot of songs very fast because Correct. we just have 15 minutes. Correct. So I, I said, that, that might not be suitable. So they said, no, 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 we want to hear, we want to hear. But that's so 15 I, minutes that's, itself, so that doesn't really matter. I think. Like Alice in Wonderland. Correct. You know? So for, for a DJ, uh, the love and appreciation of, of the crowd, of the people, of your fans, of your friends, uh, that means the most, I think. So that's why it's a wonderful Absolutely, event. absolutely, absolutely. I totally agree with you. <laughs> okay, so um, the new DJs have begun to embrace... Uh, Technology more nowadays, as you, as we all know. So, like uh, the virtual DJ, DJ Pro, etc., has, has changed the entire scene. So, what is your take on the virtual DJing and uh, how the technology has evolved? What is your take on it? Uh, I think technology is wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a wonderful thing because uh, it brings uh, a lot of people who maybe before could not access DJing. Correct. A lot of people who did not have people like Benny who, who took me to the club and gave me the correct. opportunity. Correct, correct. They could not become DJs, you know? Yeah. So technology has made everybody reach out. Yeah. If they have the talent, they can explore it. Money is not too much an issue, you know? Correct, you correct. You can buy too expensive equipment. Yeah, yeah. Polos today are pretty cheap, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that anyway. way it's it's a wonderful thing. Technical technology, it's a wonderful thing. But again, where where it hurts is that it makes it too easy. Yeah, it's very easy. That is why you see every you know actor, every producer, every singer, every dancer, every model, you know, every driver becoming a DJ. Because it's, it's become too easy. It's become too accessible and very easy, exactly. Yeah. It's really fine, but it's become too easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even the good DJs. Correct. I, I don't, you know, I think if something makes it easy, then mm -hmm. you should be doing more. Yeah, and explore more, more rather, yeah. People mixing the same way, in fact, worse than it was in the 80s and 90s. Correct. They don't use the crossfader. They'll use, they'll use the wrong knobs for the wrong things. And they don't use samples. They don't do scratching too much. They don't bring another element into it. In fact, most of the times, they are doing this. This is not what DJs are supposed to do. Or they are lip syncing to the singer. Correct. You are not Kishore Kumar. You are not supposed to sing. You know, if I had the time, if I use today's equipment, I don't use today's equipment because if I use a controller, I will be very, very, very bored. I will be very bored. It's too easy. Correct. And I don't want to be bored. I want to be excited. I want to be challenged. I want to achieve something because that will give me energy and that energy will translate to the crowd. It Correct. will emanate to the crowd. The happier Correct. I am, the more things I will do. Yeah, more... yeah. You double the energy and you send it back to the crowd. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And the more bored I get, the more easy it is for me. You know, then, then I will just do a job. I will do it like a job. I will not be excited. So rather than singing along or dancing, I think DJs should add more creative elements. There should be more Correct. creativity. Because we, we have this technology which takes away a little of the work. It makes it easier. The basics right. are easier. Right. So the idea is what more do you do? What okay. more do you do? You know, it's like marriage. Why does marriage become boring? Because when it's she's the same thing, it's, it's not worse. It's monotonous. You yeah, yeah. If you, if you don't bring in spice, of course, it gets monotonous. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. If you sit back and say, hey, now I married you. Enough. I can't do anything else. It's going gonna, it's gonna to create trouble. So similarly, as a DJ, the more you do, the more elements you can bring in, you know, you can bring in live samples, you can bring in scratching, you can do rapping if you're into hip hop. Correct. You can do all these elements, you can play an instrument. Correct. The second club I saw in Jakarta, the DJ's name was Conte Chung. Uh, people can go on Google and find out Conte Chung with a C. And 
he had four synthesizers in his control. Wow. Wow. Imagine. imagine this was in which year? Which year was this in? This is 1984. <laughs> wow. 1984. 26 years back, this DJ was using four synthesizers to add to the music that he was playing. Wow. And that is what made DJs unique, creative, and they had amazing fan following because they used to do so much. They used to do so much. Today, I'm not talking about Indian DJs only. Today, even international DJs. I'm seeing them do a lot of visual. I'm do, seeing them do a lot of visual thing and less creativity, not too much creativity. They'll, do a, they'll play a track, they'll jump on the control, they'll throw cake into the crowd. I mean, what is this going on? <laughs> are you a musician? I believe DJs are musicians. You know, I, I seriously believe that DJs are creative people. They are creative musicians. Correct. Yes, yes, they play other people's songs, definitely. But uh, it is a challenge to blend those songs and make a story. Right. You know, sometimes... To build a journey, absolutely. I, yeah. Sometimes it's easier to make a new song because you have all the, all the freedom in the world. Yes. Then to mix two songs, which have already been bound. Also, it's very important to educate the crowd as well with your music. Like a normal, normal person, or your probably your audience does not know everything. So it's, I think it's very important to educate them with your music as well. You know. Uh, definitely, definitely. I I love to do that, but but I do not take it to the extreme. Correct. You know, at the end of the day, we are there to entertain. Absolutely. So we should play 80% of what the crowd What they like, exactly, yes. But, but you also give them a take-home gift. You also give them something that they will not hear on the radio. Right. You know, they hear it at many places. Because that and is... That's how good. probably that is how you educate your crowd as well with your music, different kind of music. And exactly. You give yeah. them something. Because when they come to a club, they are buying a 10 rupee Pepsi in 100 rupees. Plus right. taxes. Right. So what are you giving them for the for the rest of the money that they are paying? An experience overall, correct. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so the DJ the DJ does not control the ambience or, or the AC or or the staff or the drinks in the we bar. We have the music in our hand and we can we can probably okay. do a lot better than yeah, exactly. Give some music which they have not heard before and which right. is good. Right. And which is good. Right. And that's the beauty of it. That is what will get you crowd. That is what will get you fans. Because people will come to you because you play something that nobody else does. Right. right. So what, what is your style of music? And uh, you know, what, what have you uh, discovered in your music genre or style of DJing in, in the past couple of years that you've been a DJ and all these years that you've been a DJ? What really, uh, yeah. I mean, what is your discovery? That's very hard to say. That's a very hard question, Donna, because uh, I will be in March, I will be celebrating 29 years. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So uh, <laughs> in 29 years, you don't stick to one genre. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. I, I was a single genre guy and I don't believe in it. I tell all my students that whatever you want to do later on, right. in the beginning, explore everything. Right. Listen to everything. Try to mix everything. And then if you want to, if you think you are good in one particular genre, then you go towards it. Because music comes and goes. Right. Genres come and go. There's an error for, I mean, it kind of has a little exactly. know, circle of life. Yeah. Exactly. Where it just keeps changing every, every time. Yeah. The only music that will stay forever is retro. Right. Evergreen music. Growing. As we keep on growing, retro keeps on growing. Correct. You know? Correct. Correct. That's the only genre that will stay forever. Otherwise, everything will come, stay for a few years, and it will go. Right. So the moment you choose one genre, you right. are limiting your creativity. I, I believe we should explore every type of music. I try to play everything. You know, you tell me yeah. a genre which is the most difficult, and I will do a night for you. I would wow. love to. Wow. I, I love being challenged. I love doing things with yeah, other people who don't do. You're a man who loves, you know, loves, loves I, I would play sentimental songs for a whole night. Oh, wow. You know, why not? We are creative people. 
Correct. We we should not limit our creativity. I seriously feel correct, that. Correct. Correct. I tell my students. And music uh, is vast. Having said that, you... I respect I respect people who want to be master of one. That's also a good know, thing. Absolutely. There yeah, are some okay. fantastic yeah. DJs who are really masters at what they do at one genre. Correct. And that is that is fantastic. I I respect that. Right. Okay. So um so tell me a bit bit about the crowd reaction in case um. You don't see the crowd reacting as per your expectations. How do you handle it? What do you do? Well, that uh, rarely happens okay. because if you're a good DJ, that will never happen. Yeah, but sometimes you never know. No, I mean when you're traveling and stuff. I mean you never really know what crowd to expect in in different places. Correct. So ah. has, it ever, has it ever occurred to you when you travel to different places and you get different crowds? and when they don't react the a certain way that you want them to or rather you expect them to what do you do how do you change your game that is where i have a secret i always call the resident dj to the hotel before the show and i talk to him and i found out find out from him what works you know right. at least that's at a least little 10, homework that you do at least 10 15 songs i know that work in that club no matter what correct no matter what so that that is those are my ace aces you know right. if something starts going wrong right it's just starting to go wrong just i know belt out go. those 10 15 songs that you have in your exactly. playlist exactly right. so right. i do homework so homework so, is necessary when you are traveling when you are going to a new place talk to the resident dj talk to the other djs over there talk to uh, the club manager talk to the barman you know talk to them find out what what goes what what kind of music people like because you can't talk to the crowd they will come later on correct. very yeah. correct yeah so what have you have you faced any challenges as a dj in your earlier days i'm sure you have would you like to share some with us anything any particular challenge that you faced if i if i if i start naming the challenges it will take 3 days maybe maybe just a little brief for all of us you know since we are not from that era so maybe a little brief maybe a, you know no challenges are always there uh, like okay let me let me talk about the time it took for me uh, to get a job you know it, it took me about 8 to 9 months to find a job as a dj because right. there were only four clubs and uh, the good thing was there were not too many djs to join right. the bad thing was there were very few clubs so unless somebody dies or somebody goes abroad you know yeah or someone who's hurt themselves however however it could be yes. yeah you are not going to get a job correct you know? correct so it took me 8 months uh, to get a job and uh, my parents were not here i was all alone in the city i did not know anybody because uh, as i said my father was in the foreign service so we, we used to be roaming around the world right. so i didn't have any friends here and uh, I used to go to the clubs. That's how I found the job. Finally, when I did find it, mm -hmm. I used to go to the clubs, and uh, I knew the DJs because okay, I'll I'll share this secret with you. How I got myself introduced to the DJs in Delhi at that time. Yeah, we uh, I the clubs because I did not have that kind of money on me. So I made I made a A3 size paper. I made okay. a leaflet kind of a thing. Okay well designed with me dancing i i didn't have a photo of me dancing so i took a photo of uh, a person dancing and i put my head on it and photocopied it you know and we put it we put it in the flyer and we i typed some material i put that you know and so basically you created your own flyer back yeah, in the I day. My own flyer wow. yeah. okay. because because i was wondering that nobody knows me in this town what how do, do you get out there how do how you get out there right to to the perspective clubs where i want to join where i want right. a job right so i sent those flyers to the general manager of each hotel which had a club right right i did not send it to the club i sent it to the general manager that is because i have done hotel management 3 years so <laughs> i'm a i'm a hotel management guy so i knew that the gm will send it to the fme manager the fme manager will send it to the club manager the disco manager and then via via bit from the yeah. main main and, person and, and the disco manager will show the dj that see there is this guy he is also a dj you know 
he, how he can said, we have him on board yeah, and stuff yeah not a good you know so, <laughs> so i i with one letter i'm hitting four people and all the four people are the people i want them to know about me in the hotel and it's coming from the higher authority the gm itself i mean exactly it's He's going from from the dj it's coming from the gm so it's it's always a you know win win situation for you these are the four guys whom i want them to know about me right so this guy right. and, and it worked and right. it, what i thought happened because i had that knowledge that happened right. all the teachers knew there is a guy called jazzy jo correct and correct all of them called me sunny sare and jo was there and jo as a redo and you know they they got to know sunny saying all these guys got to know that there is a you know guy called jazzy jo right and so when i approached these clubs in the night the first time i went to the club and i asked for the dj i used to go early when the dj would not be playing music so i asked for the dj and they went inside and said some some jazzy jo has come topi pen pe <laughs> rang biranga you know some jazzy jo has come so they knew they knew the name right right oh jazzy jo yeah 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 and they came out and met me and they right. took me in. you know so that's what a piece of paper can do for you can do right you know right. so it, uh, even my students that's what i tell them that reach out first reach out first tell people that is why the child cries when it is born it announces that i am here that i am here right right yeah you know it announces the loudest way it can announce that i am here so right correct yeah you fit to enter the industry you have to announce it you have to go and meet the dj's you have to right. letters emails anything make them aware that there is such a guy you know on the planet right right then step by step things will go forward correct correct yeah so um, how can uh, it's a question for us us uh, dj's how can a dj be more creative when it comes to music and what are the career aspects of the new generation what do you what do you think about that well uh, for that question i will say that you will get what you give the yeah. amount of music uh, the amount of music you know the amount of time you will spend with music the amount of creativity you will do in your sets will decide how long you will last right i am here for 28 and a half years that is a lifetime absolutely i totally agree with you that is a lifetime absolutely really long time years. that is that is from childhood to to starting to get old wow you know i should have been forgotten by now but right. if if a few people know me if a few people love me they respect me uh, they they like me it is only because of all the hard work all the that you put put into the music and your art right you know i took care of the sapling and today it has become a tree which is giving me shade true very true so, very true so that, that's up to you what you do how much time how much energy how much of your passion you show to the to the world right then but the what about the career aspects as as of now in today's uh, today's date for the young generation who are aspiring to be djs right now what do yes. you have to say about the career options that that we probably hold uh well i can't talk about the future because right now situations are very funny exactly right now, nothing can be happen. nothing can be told yeah, yeah. Uh, i hope and pray and i talk to my colleagues uh, other right. senior djs every day we are talking about this that how to uh, how to out, bounce back on our bounce out a situation where uh, the young ones can can earn money and make a career correct correct I, that is why i don't play online you will not see me playing online right. because because uh, that is my profession you know right. i will not do it for free right so uh, that is the idea if i do it for free what about the young ones what right. about the young ones who are taking care of their wives their children their parents where will they make their money at the end correct. of the day correct i can afford to do it for free i can god has given me enough but then but then what what am i creating correct am i creating an avenue for the young generation to earn their livelihood no i'm not i'm not doing that right so that that's why that doesn't make sense to me but the good thing for the young generation is that now there are a lot of avenues lot of avenues right. Right. just right. Like technology is helping younger djs 
similarly there are a lot of clubs there are a lot of pubs there are a lot of lounges right not our time when there were only four clubs imagine yeah yeah four clubs and every club had a dj and assistant dj how do you get a job how does the ninth person get a job correct very true yeah. today today there are thousands and it's not only that there are a lot of djs do now who are who are doing events right right you know, who are mobile curate their own yeah who curate their own events and so on yeah. they are doing weddings they are good in that and i think i think uh, now because of this situation i feel the future will be on the internet yeah i, I mean yeah need to figure out a way uh, with which the internet can be used uh, to make a little money so that uh, djs don't go hungry and uh, to pay the copyright also a little bit right. of money can be paid to the copyright so that they don't stop the streaming they don't trouble right. the djs you know that is what a lot of my colleagues are facing right now they are trying to right. play free of charge for the people which is a very noble thing to do you know but but the companies are, are stopping their streaming because of copyright yeah yeah exactly i mean so I, and I, we are facing the same problem as well even i am facing the same problem as well yeah you yeah, know, yeah. Not, no so i think the companies and the uh, internet platforms and the djs i think we all sooner or later will have to sit down and work out a way yeah everybody come together will. as one one part yeah. of an industry and probably rather, rather than running with each other or or yeah. pubs and taking the speakers rather than doing all that i think all of us uh, we belong to the same industry you know the the music company should find a conclusion rather than exactly you know. i think we should all sit down and work out a way in which right. everybody gains you know the crowd gains the dj's gain the companies gain right. the platforms gain i think that that has to be done sooner or later very true well we've come to an end of the question answer round now we have a little bit of rapid fire questions for you sir <laughs> we are also running out of time so you got to make this a little bit quick so yeah 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 please go ahead so um okay are we ready we ready yeah. when you are so yeah yeah so you can make it short or probably one word however you like it you can you can tell me i'm so, many words. so one word <laughs> difficult uh, one sentence is also do but just rap rapid fire questions you know so okay. just be short and sweet and to the point yeah okay, okay. so uh, best and worst thing about being a dj best thing about being a dj for me i don't work and what's the worst thing about being a dj nothing you just nothing. like djing as a whole yeah i love it i'm living right. the life i'm living the life that i want to live right i think i think i'm the happiest guy on the planet <laughs> yeah. right so yeah so where do you like to play the most wedding corporate clubs pool parties what is your uh, and the list goes on so what what is your kind of place that you want to play the most that you enjoy playing the most clubs, clubs. yeah okay. i'm a club dj okay three annoying things request statements that you have uh, that you hear very often whenever you're performing uh songs people song sing in your ears oh yes <laughs> and they expect you to know the song in spite yeah. of singing the wrong lines exactly and half of the time they are drunk they don't know what they are singing you know so uh, okay, that's, that's one I mean. that's one they got to say three annoying things second is the word uh, bhaiya <laughs> yeah. okay i i didn't know my father had such a such a colorful life that i had so many brothers around you know okay and third one uh, third one uh, annoying yeah play play something fast that's something i still don't understand like what do you want yeah play something <laughs> what fast by, what do you yeah. mean by fast i'm already on 138 a uh, 130 bpm how much yeah. more fast can i take oh, oh, you know okay and then, um, and then there are and then there are people who will say can i see your music oh. then i'll tell you what to play what to play yeah <laughs> correct correct okay so uh, react with one word to the following music okay. awards relationship family fans parties so we start with music i can't remember all of them have to go I'll one by you, one i'll tell you yeah one i'll tell you first is music life awards 
life because as long as i'm living i'm making music my heartbeat okay but about I, I awards it, as well about the still life awards second was oh, awards uh, encouraging okay relationship necessary family two words most important absolutely fans four words a gift from heaven <laughs> parties favorite my favorite thing <laughs> okay awesome <clears throat> okay a piece of advice you wished you had gotten 10 years ago or rather from the beginning of your journey you know a piece of advice that would have helped you in your journey nothing nothing really as in you if i if, I, wish. if i look at my life my life has been wonderful especially the tough parts especially okay. the tough phases in my life they've been wonderful they've taught me so much they've so right they've taken me towards the you know anything that would probably make life a little easy for you in those days any kind of advice that you should, that you wished you had but you never got no okay okay no. moving on that's it uh, was wonderful if i had to live my life again i wouldn't change a thing wow that's great okay so worst criticism you've ever received you look like a girl <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell, so I mean, I don't know back in the days, but I I couldn't tell. No, you look like a man. No, that was back in the days. That was that was before Sanjay Dutt also. You always had long hair. You always you always owned a long long hair. Yeah, yeah, I had longer hair. This oh. is nothing. I had hair till here. <laughs> I had longer hair. Wow. And okay. Before Sanjay Dutt even came into the scene. Right. Right. Uh, okay. Moving on. Uh, women, one thing. Sorry. Two women. They said. They told me you look like a girl. I said, okay. I, I won't tell you. Okay, I'll tell you. I told them, Auntie G, it takes more than long hair to make a girl. <laughs> you have a daughter. You should know that. <laughs> okay, moving on. So, one thing you would like to change in the industry? Any one thing? Some of the owners of the clubs. Okay. Now, would you like to describe how? In, no. In a brief. Brief no because, uh they're not bad people but they are people who have got into the business for the wrong reasons i think the work ethics is very important to for one to understand mm-hmm. and know so exactly you treat others with you know, equal respect and I, I you know whenever you do a business mm-hmm. you do reiki you go abroad you see because this clubs are a western concept whether we like it right. or we don't right. you know they yeah. are a western concept so if right. i were to open a club even today with all the experience that i have i would still go to singapore i would go to uk i would go to us i would, if not i i don't want to spend too much money i would go to bangkok right i would right. go to pattaya i would go to walking street i would see the clubs there i would see what is going on how they are managing what music are they playing and what crowd are they getting for that kind of music right right i would do that i would not just open a club because a friend of mine said chal yaar let's open a club yaar <laughs> Right, open right. bottle in the night. You decided to open a club, so and and not just for money. If you open a club just for money, I don't think it's the right way to be. It's the right way to go because clubs do make money. Definitely, they make profit. They make money. It is a good business. Definitely, but that is only if you do it right. Correct. Correct. You know, okay. clubs clubs make business from from doing it right. if you are not going to do it right the process is the most important thing in a club nobody okay. comes to a club because it has a certain liquor or a certain song or whatever everything contributes it's a complete it's a yeah it's a complete package complete right. experience so yeah. unless you know how to get the experience you know for example there was there was this owner who used to tell me that jazzy why are the young people coming the young crowd the college crowd hmm. they come and uh, for a few nights it was free entry so they said they come free they don't pay yeah they don't pay they don't buy drinks they go to their cars and they drink and they dance here to your music you like them because you got dancers but they don't give business 
Right. So I told him, I said, sir, the day this young crowd will not come, the old crowd will go. Because they exactly. are here to see the young For crowd. Them. Right, right. That is the ambience, that is the energy which right. attracts the elder crowd. Right. You know, they are here to see energy. Correct, correct. I'm, I'm not going to stand in, on the floor and dance for them. This is what the vibe is. They create the vibe. The younger crowd is creating the vibe. Correct, correct. They did not agree. It was a different club, separate club. They threw the, the young crowd out. Hmm. After two months, it became a dance bar. Oh. Then yeah. I met I, after five, six months, I told him, I said, today you are paying young people to dance at your place. And that time you had young people come for free. Yes, that time you had young people coming for free. He said, Jazzy, you were right. You were correct. So that's what I'm saying, that it's a process. If you don't right. know the process, then don't open a club. It's better not to open a club. Otherwise, you will, you will feel sad. The staff will feel sad. The right. DJ will feel frustrated. Not a good idea. Correct, correct. Okay, moving on. So tell me that one track that never gets old for you. One track that's always etched in your heart. Too many. <laughs> one track, any one that, you know, it, it kind of uh, just... Just an illusion. Okay. That's okay. by imagination. Right. The one more thing is another song that makes you dance. Are you a dancer? Do you like dancing? Uh, no, I don't dance anymore. But you used to, uh, back in the days. I'm not about whenever. The one track uh, that, can all, that can get you back on your feet. Anytime, any day. Uh, one uh, no. There has to be one. I used to dance like nobody else. I used to dance in a way that my parents used to be embarrassed because they used to get, my father used to get his colleagues for dinner at home. My father was a diplomat. So he used to get other diplomats home for dinner. And after dinner, I would bring the two in one and I would wear white gloves and I would Michael dance. Michael Jackson. Were you a yeah. fan of Michael Jackson? Yeah, I'm a fan of Michael Jackson. So, and I would dance for them and my father would be embarrassed. You know? <laughs> Yeah. So is there any but, track that you can tell us that would uh, that would make you, you know, reminisce those three days or probably get you back on the floor again? Anything, any one number no. that you can broken, remember? Broken just hearts keep changing. Dance. Broken okay. heart, no dance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Uh, last rapid fire question. Um, what is the craziest thing a fan has done for you? The craziest thing? Uh -huh. Too many things actually. Anyone? We're running out of time also, sir. <laughs> the I, would, I would call it the cutest. Uh, that was uh, at a show at Indira Gandhi Stadium. I used to do these shows for, for high school, you know, Mr. and Mrs. High School right. and these competitions and all. So right. I used to do these shows. I was the first uh, DJ, club DJ to do these shows in the public. Right, right. Because at that time, we were gods. DJs were right. gods. Right. And, and our heaven was the club. We did not go anywhere. The people used to come to us. Right. If they want good music, they will come to us. Right. But any, I was, any experience that, uh, that a fan has done for you? Any, any crazy experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was the first guy to go and play in stadiums and do all that. So once mm -hmm. after the show, uh, the children, they used to come for autographs always. So a girl, she came running and she said, uh, Mr. Joe, can I get your autograph? I said, yeah, sure. Uh, I said, where? She said, here, on my shirt. You know, <laughs> I said, I said, I'm sorry, I can't do that. You know, your shirt will get, you know, destroyed and your mother and father will curse me. They will say, Kon ye DJ khraab kar gaya? Meri bachi ki shirt. Abhi <laughs> right. padega. You can't go with, with a signed shirt to the school. Right, said, no, right. no, please, 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 please. I tried to get away from it, but she stood there for 15 minutes while I was doing oh. other autographs. And she was too cute and too passionate about it. So yeah. I did some work. Uh, uh, cut, cut to uh, 21 years later. I get a call from a lady and she tells me, I got your phone number from a friend uh, who's an MC. And do you know who I am? I said, no. She's like, I'm the same girl whose shirt you signed on in that show. And wow. I, still, I still have the shirt with me. <laughs> wow, that's, that's super that cool. Wow. So touching. I was so touched. 
Oh, you know? I mean, yeah, people remember you. Little, little thing. It's, 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 yeah. it's remarkable. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now that we're done with all the rapid fire questions, we only have um, the last segment of the show, and okay. we have five minutes to go. So, um, okay. any advice you want to give to the new generation of DJs, and you know uh, how to take care of their mental health at this point of time, about the lockdown and you know situations right now? Any advice? Um, is helpful. The, the lockdown. There are two things you can do in the lockdown. You can sit and cry about the way things were, or you can reinvent yourself. Correct. You can use this time to look at your music collection. You know, to take care of the collection, to weed out the songs you will never play. You know, to select the songs you will play and compile them together. Reduce right. the number of. pen drives or cds or records that you use right or or you can learn something like i have started to do a show on youtube about about my autograph records i've started to do, to do that i never thought i would be on youtube i would do right. these shows but That's i'm doing right. it because, because it's something creative it's something nice and i'm sharing what i have with the with the rest of the people so right. the choice is yours You want to waste the space and start something that probably they've never had the time to do in all Ex these years. It's, exactly. it's the right time, actually. It's the right time to introspect yourself and you know exactly. start something. So look at something. it as a, as an opportunity. This is an opportunity to make yourself better. You have been in given whatever a, field you like, not just in music, but whatever field you like. In whatever actually, field, right? Is it a break in the movie for you to get popcorn and a soft drink? right you can go to the loo if you want this is that break before right. before it all starts again enjoy this time organize yourself learn something new spend time with the families djs right. don't get time to spend with the families we right. don't because we work right. at night we sleep till the afternoon till the day and today's djs have it much harder much more difficult right okay the djing has become easier but today but the, the jobs the media. job jobs are not as easy as no, the social media there correct. is responsibility of the social media correct every dj has to have an account has to be promoting has to be there has yeah, to be yeah 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 so there are many more things to do than there used to be before so i think this is a break that all of us are getting we should look at it right. like that we should use it utilize it to the best of what we can we should spend time with our families so that they can also understand that we we are not just working zombies they can understand nahi yaar mera beta mera hi hai abhi djing djing ko nahi diya maine yeah exactly yeah a little break yeah, exactly. i think i think we should enjoy this i think it's a wonderful time i am having a great time also it's important to you know reconnect with yourself and your family and your friends that you've not had i mean exactly. most of us have the time because we travel so much and we live far from our homes as well exactly But good time to exactly. introspect your, on your on yourself and exactly. you know spend time with and god willing and god willing we will do that again correct we will get correct. a chance to do all of that again but right. right now when the break is there enjoy the break right let's let's right. enjoy this time rather than sitting and craving and wondering and being scared and being worried what for what for right you know yes we are not right. making money we used to make but dona we are also not spending the kind of money we used to money spend money we used to spend exactly yeah right. so so we are saving there also right you know so it is how you look at it it's your perception so right. i would advise everybody not to not to be scared not to be worried not to sit and waste your time and wonder when things are happening like Rather like start. YouTube, like the youtube thing i am doing i have planned it till the first week of march right so right. i am not worried till the first week of march i am sorted similarly i would advise all my friends all my younger friends to to plan ahead for the next six months so that you are not worried you are not what's scared happen, what's going to come next right exactly things right. will take care there are problems there are challenges we all are having issues but we can all work it out we are the greatest thing that god has created right you know where is, where is there a problem that we can't solve right you know so so uh, and dj's are wonderful at mixing different genres we can do hip hop we can do trance we can do house 
when we can right. mix different bpms why can't we take care of different times you know very true very true and and ups and downs are a part of one's life so exactly that's it just fun. makes you value life a little bit more and then exactly you... so yeah so uh, sir can you can you tell us uh, one particular incident that that has happened with you and your uh, dj friends from the industry any one particular instance that you remember uh, well uh, there are many <laughs> any one uh, that you can share with us something funny or anything oh yeah something that... funny yeah definitely yeah, 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 i can, yeah. i can tell you about this event we did in bangalore uh, it was uh, organized by a friend of mine and uh, just before the event i got a fever of 104 Oh, and uh, but but I I was never one to quit, so I took a paracetamol right. and I flew to the event, but somehow the fever just wouldn't go. Uh, so even in the event, even in the event, it was supposed to be a competition. Oh wow! We were all supposed to be competitors, okay. fighting for the trophy. And even in the event, I had the fever, hundred and four, just wouldn't go down. It went down in the plane, but came back in the event. and uh, the organizer was telling us that you know you you have to announce and you have to uh, kind of act like wwf you know that you are you are better than the other dj right right you know? so if you can rap if you can do something you have to show your attitude right you are better than everyone else when your turn turn comes so we were supposed to be that we were supposed to be aggressive you know and and go there like wwe warriors fighters you know and it was called war of the so dj who all were there in that in that particular event with you uh, i don't remember too many uh, but uh, but uh, they were all friends we were all friends and uh, i wouldn't like to take names okay <laughs> otherwise they might kill me for for saying all this so now my turn came to play and everybody is asking me are you okay are you okay can you do it i said yeah of course i'll do it you know so what fever it's okay uh, i'll do it for 20 minutes we were supposed to play sets of 20 20 minutes and i went to the stage and i started playing and uh, while playing suddenly i felt very weak so i mixed and i kind of took the support of the backdrop right and the other teacher was standing beside the stage they saw this they saw this and they understood that there's a problem jazz is not well they all came rushing onto the stage but we want to name the know the names of your friends one no i wouldn't i wouldn't say that oh, somebody who helped you is there's no harm in taking their names so no the manager would kill me so no sure so not listen no they all came rushing to the stage and they all held me and helped me i said no i'm okay i just feel a little dizzy i'm okay dizzy, i'm okay yeah, yeah. so then after that for the next 15 minutes they kept on handing me my cds and i i finished the set but i kept on playing with the help of four five djs and the oh, event oh, manager that's sweet held his head that what i wanted you guys to do and what are you doing you are helping each other <laughs> that's so sweet it, yeah that's sweet that's that's turned that's out sweet. it turned out as not the war of djs but the love of djs <laughs> so who are you still i mean are you are you friends like real close friends with any of the djs in the industry at the moment ah uh, yes all of them everybody yeah yeah everybody i yeah. i like to be friends with djs because it's like a doctor a doctor can you name a few who are your really close friends from back in the back in the days until up until now maybe one or two names not too many not one or two i'm sure there are plenty but one there or are two. like they're really close to you they're all close to me akbar akhtar ivan sanjay datta jimmy tangri was was a dj you know they're all close to me all all the old school sunny sarid right philip you know all of them sunny singh we still talk nearly every day right, he's in right. kerala in delhi we'll yes. both sitting at home but we chat so you know i i still have all of them as my friends that is my family Wow. because as a dj who will understand you better than another dj correct very true you very know true. the the fun of it in the the difficult parts who will understand you better than a right. dj right and you yeah. can at least you know every time that we that that people talk and meet we always end up talking about our industry irrespective of what situation we are in 
So exactly. yeah, so yeah, I understand. Yes. So I think I think D, uh, DJs are family, you know, right. and we should treat each other as family, because there is there is very less chance that anybody else will understand you or your life or your achievements or or your sad parts or your challenges better than another DJ. Very true. You know, right. so I think. i think we should all we should all be like that and i am i am blessed that all of my colleagues i can't even call them old school djs because all are still relevant all are still rocking right right, right. they are all still yeah top of the charts you know right all of them are, are still together as a family we we meet once a year we meet this year we could not meet because of this situation otherwise around april we meet we met in goa we met in bombay all of us we are about we have a whatsapp group we chat every day uh, about 10 of us you know so uh, we, we still together we, we love we love it because we cannot talk to anybody else like we talk to each other each other right yeah right all right thank you so much sir, for having for being here with us today thank you so yeah, much it was thank a pleasure thank you pleasure all mine sir thank you so much thank you so yeah, much all the best thank you